Hi guys, it's Kate Rice, the Adorkful Girl. Uh, I want to start this video, uh, which is a going to be a storytelling video. Um, but I would like to start it by first acknowledging some very special people that I know who have been doing really hard work during the COVID-19 outbreak um, in the healthcare industry. And I feel like they need extra love and support and uh, kudos at this time. So I'm just going to read a list of names and uh, send them all my love and tell them how much I appreciate them and how much I appreciate that what they're doing for sick people everywhere. Um, the first person is Pat Rice, who is my mom-in-law. Um, the second person is Dr. Sarah Doyle, who is my cousin. Uh, the third is Dr. Kate Doyle, also my cousin, and she is an emergency room physician, so she is on the front lines of this crisis. I would like to thank my darling friend Haley, who is uh, a, a surgery nurse, and she is up to her elbows in blood and guts every day, um, and she is also on the front lines. I would like to thank my friend Sherry Kirkbride, who is a respiratory uh, therapist who is helping people to breathe in Ohio, one patient at a time. I'd like to thank Tiffany Brady Alderman. I would like to thank my friend Eddie, who drives a paravan, taking sick patients to and from the doctor and the emergency room who are unable to take themselves via transport, car, or cab. Um, I would like to thank my friend Robin Codewell, who, uh, confide to me that she thinks that she had coronavirus at the beginning of January. Thankfully, she's recovered and I hope that she is enjoying some quiet time at home. I would like to thank my college friend, Julie Shin, who is a nurse. I would like to thank Holly Cooper Pershwin. I'm Holly, you are a friend from high school and I'm not sure exactly what you do uh, in the healthcare field, but thank you so much for um, whatever it is that you are doing to help us in this national crisis. Um, I would like to thank my friend Carrie Cat No Pants. Um, that is obviously not her real name, but she is in the healthcare field, and I know that she is. She also has little kids, and she's on the front line every day, um, trying to keep people healthy. I would like to thank my friend Eric Henthorn, whom I love dearly. Uh, thank you for the medical training you have, and for being available to help people if they should need it in your um, your general social sphere. I would like to thank Teresa Carpenter, who is an unsung hero in the healthcare industry. She's a data analyst for a hospital and she cannot do her work from home. So she has to go into work every day and um, be on the front lines and risk being exposed to COVID-19 in the hospital that she works in from uh, any patient that could walk through the door. Um, I would like to thank the four members of Amanda Howland's family who work in healthcare. Thank you guys. You're doing very important work right now. And I know that Amanda is very worried about all of you. I would like to thank my friend, Chris Dorman. Chris, you're amazing and I love you so much. And um, I hope that you're staying safe doing what you do every day. I would like to thank Laura Browning, um, who I don't know what you do either, but whatever it is, it's super important. And I thank you so much. I would like to thank my darling friend, uh, one of my favorites in the whole world, Rhonda Van Horn Ayers, who is a friend from way back in junior high school through high school who I've remained close with. Um, thank you, Rhonda. Thank you for being out there helping people on a daily basis. And I would like to thank my good high school friend, Elizabeth Hill's brother. I'm not sure which of her brothers that I am thinking, but one of them works in healthcare and um, is actually not working right now because he is home taking care of an, a very ill wife. And um, that means that he's taking her to and from doctor's appointments and to and from the hospital and um, is running errands for her to make sure that she is comfortable. And um, uh, you are out there, not only do you do a heroic job, but you are out there every day um, doing such a great thing for your wife and um, I wish her well. Please send her my love. Okay, sip of coffee. Mm -hmm. Parent of a 20 month old uh, keeps you busy and tired. So as some of you know, um, I am an essayist. I've been writing essays for about as long as I can remember. Um, and most of them are humorous. Um, and today I want to read you one of them. 
some people might also know that um, I stopped writing six years ago and performing six years ago because of the death of our daughter Madeline whose death anniversary is actually today it's been six years and I just couldn't find the fortitude to be creative and in January this year 2020 I told myself that I was gonna put myself back out there and start reading uh, pieces at story slams and uh, other open mics again and that I was gonna start writing again um, and I've been doing some writing it's not ready to be shared with the public yet um, but I want to be on camera sharing my stories uh, to kind of get my performance feet back under me because it's been a while and I hope you'll bear with me um, these stories may or may not be funny uh, to you they are funny to me because I live through them and um, this story is about my dad and it's called three healthy farts I wrote it in 2007 last week I called my mom just to check in and see what was going on back home while we were on the phone she told me that she was heading back to Kent from our lake house in New York because my dad, better known as the Sparkmeister, was gonna have his first colonoscopy and she was going to be the take him home person after the procedure was finished. No need to worry, not a big deal, totally routine. I'll call you if there's any problem. Okay, cool mom. Spark's getting something shoved up his bum. No worries here, sounded completely normal to me. The thing that you need to understand is there is no man on the face of the planet who enjoys pooping more than my dad. He makes a huge deal of it, informing us all when he's headed to the bathroom, which occasionally he calls the boardroom, for his daily business meeting. So, colonoscopy, helping Spark to have healthy business. This is a good thing. The next day, my phone rang at work. It was my mom, so I answered it right away. I thought something had gone wrong or they had found something up Spark's bum that shouldn't have been there and was a big cause for concern. I was a little panicky. Mom, what, what, what's wrong? I asked. On the other end of the phone, I could hear her gasping, nearly crying with laughter. Mom, why are you calling? I demanded now as I was fairly wigged out and let's face it, curious as to what had made my mother the classic example of Midwestern reserve, crack up as such. <laughs> oh, Katie, huh, huh, okay, she said, your dad. <laughs> the colonoscopy was fine, but, but, but Katie, the doctor came in and said, said to him, said, Katie, he said, I can't let you go until you produce three healthy farts as my mom of the ship gasped for breath and continued, <laughs> and your dad, Spark, Spark, he just got this, this little smirk on his face, like, like this was what he was put on earth to do. And then he let three huge farts just rip out one after the other. And Katie, Katie, the doctor made this disgusted face. Your dad disgusted the poop doctor, Katie, and he just strutted out of his that room like he was the king of all shit. At this point, I was struggling to keep from crying with laughter. I had my fist stuffed into my mouth and my shoulders were just shaking with laughter. I could totally imagine Spark, the man who thinks it's hilarious to rip one out at the dinner table with this smug little look on his face, just farting big, loud, stinky farts with glee. Truly. I think that Sparky should have a colonoscopy every week if it makes him that gleeful. Normally he's grumpy and frequently he is an unrepentant smart ass, but gleeful, however, has never been a word that I would use to describe my dad. He may have bordered on gleeful once when my brothers and I all moved out of the house permanently, but other than that, the closest that he gets to gleeful is mischievous. <laughs> Mom, I'm at work. <laughs> That's really good to hear. I giggled. I've got to go, but, but tell Spark that I'm glad that he has found his life's calling. As I hung up the phone, my co-workers looked at me with curiosity as I just had to shake my head and say, you just have to know Sparky, but, 
<laughs> Basically, he just found his ideal advocation. That's my dad. He's a riot, if not a little stinky at times. Side note. I told my younger brother this story as we were walking to dinner about a week after it happened, and he started laughing so hard that tears ran down his face and that he had to stop, bend over, and catch his breath. The end. So that's my story, Three Healthy Farts. It's one of my mom's favorites. Hi, mom. Um, and I hope that you enjoy it as well. Uh, I'll be back in a few days, I guess, maybe. I'm not sure when. Busy schedule uh, to read another one of my essays. And uh, thank you for watching. And I hope that you enjoyed it. And I enjoyed doing it. And thanks for coming with me on this journey as I work to get my performance legs back under me so that I can perform at Story Slams and open mics everywhere. <laughs>